science fiction is becoming fact, and we're not sure we like it. A tech firm in Wisconsin is about to become the first company in the U.S. to give microchip implants to its employees. Three Square Market, which designs software for vending machines, says more than 50 of its workers have volunteered to have the devices fitted. The microchips are about the size of a grain of rice and will be inserted into the skin between the thumb and forefinger. The microchips will allow workers to access the building and log on to their computers. Employees can also use the chips to buy food-like products from office vending machines. The purveyors of this dystopian technology claim there is no GPS function and it won't be used to keep tabs on employees. But we can't help but feel like we're sleepwalking into a future where even the blandest details of our lives are recorded, possibly to be used against us at a later date. The company says none of its employees are required to get a chip implant. But it's not impossible to imagine a world where this kind of thing is the norm. And if you want a job, you'll have no choice but to become part cyborg. Just because something tech-related is possible doesn't mean we have to do it. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Not all technological developments should be welcomed. Australian biohackers implant RFID chips under their skin. A brave and increasing number of biohackers in Australia are implanting microchips in their hands that allow them to remotely unlock doors and perform other tasks. The microchips are roughly the size of a grain of rice. The chips employ either RFID or NFC technology. RFID, or radio frequency identification, is a one-way communication system. RFID receivers can read data stored on the chip even at a considerable distance. RFID chips can be used to replace identification badges to unlock secure doors. NFC stands for Near Field Communication. This technology can be used for two-way communications but has a maximum operation range of 10 centimeters. An NFC chip can integrate multiple contact details and transfer them to a receiving device. It can also store complex medical data and share that information with hospitals. For the biohackers among you, an Australia couple has started a business of selling these microchips. An NFC chip costs 140 Australian dollars, while an RFID chip costs just 80. U.S. to switch to chip-enabled credit cards. Credit card companies in the U.S. are switching to chip-enabled cards, which they say will make cards more difficult to clone. With chip and PIN cards, the credit card data is not stored on a magnetic stripe, but a tiny computer chip. The chip also acts as a data processor, which helps encrypt information when it communicates with a card reader. Customers use chip-enabled credit cards by inserting the cards into payment terminals and punching in a four-digit PIN or signing their signature. Chip and PIN terminals are also able to work offline, meaning charges can be processed using the chip alone, with charges authorized in bulk at the end of the day. However, Reuters reports experts saying that data in chipped credit cards are still vulnerable at payment terminals, during transmission through a processor, and when it is stored in a retailer's information system. Data is also still unprotected during online transactions. Reuters reports that the change in the U.S. from magnetic stripe cards to chip-enabled cards will come at a price tag of 8.65 billion U.S. dollars, while only a narrow range of security issues are being addressed. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Cell phones linked to low sperm count in men. A study by Israel's Technion Medicine and Carmel Medical Center found a link between cell phone usage and sperm quality. They studied 106 men for a full year and found 47% of those who kept phones in their pants pocket had low sperm counts, compared to 11% of the general population. Men who used their phones while charging talked on them for more than an hour a day, and those who slept with phones near their bedside also had significantly lower sperm counts. Professor Martha Dernfield of Technion University said, We think this is being caused by a heating of the sperm from the phone and by electromagnetic activity. 
Dr. Ariel Silberlicht of Carmel Medical Center recommends keeping phone calls short, carrying phones in a pocket away from the groin area, and keeping phones at a distance while sleeping. The study did not mention anything about cell phones being used as a cheap form of birth control, but there's no telling what the technology of tomorrow will bring.